Hello. One of the most important systems inside our bodies, which is responsible to transport, to transfer, to distribute oxygen, digested food, and water to all parts of the body. This is done by the circulatory system. This system is responsible to transport, to transfer, to distribute oxygen, digested food, and water to all parts of the body. Then, it is responsible to carry or to transfer the wastes from burning of food inside the body cells and taking them to some organs to get rid of them. Once again, your circulatory system is responsible to transfer or to transport digested food, oxygen, and water to all parts of the body. Then it transports wastes. These wastes are produced from burning of food inside the body cells. The body should get rid of them or they will poison the blood or causing blood poisoning. This system is responsible to transfer these waste products to some organs to get rid of them. The circulatory system is consisting of three main parts. Number one, your heart. Number two, uh, uh, blood vessels. Number three, blood. The heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. These are the main components of your circulatory system. The heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. Your heart is a strong muscle. Thanks God, strong muscle. Its size, like the size of your large fist. Like the size of your large fist, this one. So almost my body, my heart size, almost in this size. It doesn't mean because I'm taller than you, bigger than you, it means that my heart is like a family size. No, this is not true. Your heart is a strong muscle, it's sized like the size of a large fist. It is located here, inside your chest cavity, not inside the abdominal cavity. The abdominal cavity is separated from the chest cavity by a sheet of muscle. Later on you will know its name, which is called the diaphragm. It's located below the two lungs. But here in this lesson, we have to focus on the heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. Once again, the heart is a strong muscle. It's sized like the size of a large fist. It is located here in the chest cavity between the two lungs. So, if you look at the heart, don't be frightened from its shape. And uh, don't ever say that the heart shape is like this one. <laughs> no, this is not true. This sign, it means that I love all of you. But in real, the, the, the structure of the heart, the shape of the heart is not like this one. No. If you look at the shape of the diagram of the heart, you can predict what's going on inside your heart. Before explaining what's going on inside your heart, we have to know its function. The function of your heart is to pump the blood, pump the blood, to push the blood to all parts of the body. Your heart is a strong muscle which pumps the blood to all parts of the body. It consists of two sides. Right side and left side. Here is the right side. And here is the left side. Sorry. Usually, the direction of the two sides of the heart is the opposite to the direction of your hands. For instance, if you have a question and a diagram in the test, like this one, to identify its sides in the right direction, your left hand in front of the right side, your right hand in front of the left side, okay? The opposite direction of your hand.
Don't think it's no. When you answer the questions in your test papers, the past papers or the exam is put on your desk. So if you find a diagram or a model of or a drawing for the heart, don't ever crime a mistake, simple mistake. Because it's very simple and direct and easy. Your left arm, your left hand in front of the right side. Your right hand in front of the left side. Okay? Don't be confused. Your heart is composed of or made up of two sides, right side and left side. Here in the right side, the blood reaches in carbon dioxide. But here in the left side, the blood reaches in oxygen. The blood reaches in carbon dioxide in the right side is called deoxygenated blood. DE. D letter and E letter. Deoxygenated blood. But the blood which is rich in oxygen in the left side is called oxygenated blood. So if I'm going to ask you, the blood is more oxygenated in which side of the heart? In the left or in the right? Yes, in the left. In the left side, the blood which is in oxygen, so it is called oxygenated blood. But here in the right side, the blood rich in carbon dioxide, which is called deoxygenated blood. Once again, your heart is a strong muscle which pumps the blood to all parts of the body. It consists of two sides, right side and left side. Here in the right side, the blood rich in carbon dioxide, which is called deoxygenated blood. But here in the left side, the blood rich in oxygen, which is called oxygenated blood. If you look here, between the right side and left side, you can find a muscular wall, a muscular, muscular wall called septum, septum. Between the right side and left side, there is a muscular wall called septum. Why? to prevent the blood from mixing together so that the oxygenated blood doesn't mix with deoxygenated blood. Sometimes, sometimes some people are suffering from um, some holes between the two sides. It needs an operation and they are recovered uh, properly and it returns back once again. Um, so, to simplify what I have explained, your circulatory system is responsible to transport or transport digested food, oxygen, and water to all parts of the body and transport waste to some organs to get rid of them. It consists of three main organs or three main parts. Number one, the heart. Number two, the blood. Number two, the blood vessels. Your heart is a strong muscle. It, it, it's sized like the size of your large fist located here in the chest cavity between the two lungs. This is a description of the heart, for the heart. Then, your heart is a strong muscle, or weak muscle, strong muscle, which pumps the, the heart, the blood, pumps the blood to all parts of the body. The heart is a strong muscle which pumps the blood to all parts of the body. It consists of two sides, right side and left side. Here in the right side, the blood rich in carbon dioxide, which is called deoxygenated blood. But here in the left side, the blood rich in oxygen, which is called oxygenated blood. Between the right side and left side, there is a muscular wall called septum. There is a muscular wall called septum. Why? To prevent the blood from mixing together. If you look at each side of the heart, you can notice that it consists of two rooms or two chambers. Each side in the heart is consisting of two chambers or two rooms. One upstairs and one downstairs. One upstairs and one downstairs. The two rooms or the two chambers in the heart 
the two upper chambers of the heart are called atriums. 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 So you have right atrium and left atrium. But the lower chambers of the heart are called ventricles. 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 So you have right ventricle and left ventricle. Again. Each side of the heart, each side, right side and left side, each side, each one of them is consists of two chambers or two rooms. One upstairs and one downstairs. One upstairs and one downstairs. The two chambers upstairs are called atriums. The two chambers downstairs are called ventricles. So, how many chambers or rooms in the heart and how many sides? How many sides? Two. Right and left. Then how many chambers? Four. Yes. What are they? Right atrium, left atrium. Right ventricle and left ventricle. Between each chamber, between each chamber, there is a valve, like a door which opens in one way, in one direction. Between each atrium and ventricle, there is a valve. Between each atrium and ventricle, there is a valve. The two valves between atriums and ventricles here in the heart are responsible to flow the blood, to pass the blood from the atriums to the ventricles in one direction, from the top to the bottom, and never return the blood once again up. Once again, once again. Each side of the heart is consists of two chambers or two rooms, one upstairs and one downstairs. One upstairs and one downstairs. Between each atrium and ventricle, there is a valve. Between each atrium and ventricle, there is a valve. The function of the valve between the atriums and ventricles to open in one way or to open in one direction, like in this direction, and never return back once again. No, they are responsible to flow the blood or to transfer the blood from atriums to ventricles in one direction and never return it back once again to the atrium. 